disease modifying therapies. Let's just make sure we're talking about the same thing. When we talk about treatment of MS, we talk really about the three things we're trying to do. We're trying to modify the disease, meaning we're trying to prevent future relapses, hopefully future MRI changes, hopefully future disability changes. Then we also may want to help with actual symptoms. And these are the day-to-day -day things that you have. And a lot of times, a lot of the focus you see online is about the disease-modifying therapies. And while we've made amazing advancements, and in 1992, we had none. In 93, we had our first, and now we have a lot. And that's exciting. But still, what I think most people worry about are their day-to-day -day symptoms. And some of that is managed through medicines. A lot of it is managed through other things. We manage it through physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy. We do things like mindful meditation, like yoga. We use Ayurvedic medicine. We use homeopathic medicine. We use complementary alternative. We use diet. We use exercise. There's a lot we can do. And then the third part of treating MS is what do you do when someone actually has an MS relapse, an exacerbation or attack? What do you do to make it last for a shorter amount of time? And there, most of what we do, while we have other treatments, most of what we do is use high-dose steroids. Now, in terms of the disease-modifying therapies, we started out with self-injectables, and then we started, having, uh, we started having oral medications and IV medications. And so that first oral medication came out in 2010. That was very exciting. It was exciting because it was that first oral, but not everyone jumped to it because there's still safety concerns and still other reasons. That first oral medication is almost, not yet, but almost gonna be a generic medicine. We actually have generic medications now for multiple sclerosis. We not only have generic, one of the injectable medicines, we actually have a generic oral medication that's been used by a lot of people. So Tecfidera was used by a lot of people with multiple sclerosis, and now it's available generically as dimethyl fumarate. Then we also have IV medications. And so IV medications, some of those we use off-label, meaning they're not approved for MS. But when you think about the ones that are used for MS, commonly we think about ones like natalizumab, also called Tysabri. One that we don't use as much, but it's very powerful, is called alimtuzumab or Lemtrada. And one that's been approved only recently, but had a lot of usage, is called acrolizumab or acrovis. You asked a question about a specific self-injectable. I think what you were asking about is the latest self-injectable. And that latest self-injectable is actually the latest medicine approved as of today. I say that because tomorrow there will be a new medicine probably approved. There actually is a medicine that will probably be approved tomorrow. So at the time of the filming of this, the latest medicine was a medicine called Kasimta or Ofatumumab. And that's a subcutaneous injection that you give once a month. And so there's a lot of excitement about a lot of different medicines. We're finally looking at things not just about how you walk. We're looking at how you think. And we're saying, well, MS affects your thinking. So why don't we want medicines that can help with that? And so we think about that as well when we're choosing our medications.